Welcome to DevOps Info Channel. Today we are going to take a look at uh, identifying the legacy authentication uh, clients that is still used in your Azure AD Genet. As we all know, Azure AD supports a wide range of authentication protocols, including the legacy authentication in the past. So this is mainly to provide users with convenient access uh, to the cloud apps and the apps that is registered uh, in the Azure AD. However, if multi-factor multi authentication is not supported, uh, the legacy uh, like such, such as MFA or any kind of second factor requirement. Uh, nowadays, MFA is getting more common requirement for all the organizations to improve the security posture. Uh, and uh, except for the SMTP authentication, Microsoft has uh, started disabling uh, all the types of basic authentication. Uh, as we know, like for the Exchange Online, uh, in all Microsoft 365 tenants, it is disabled uh, from October uh, 1, uh, 2022. It is important to know that, uh, note that uh, every organization should block the legacy authentication to improve the security posture. Uh, as we all know, the passwords uh, are compromised uh, because of any kind of second factor authentication not enforced uh, or uh, the protocols uh, which they are using if it is legacy or if they are uh, not using any kind of uh, the modern authentication clients. So in a huge enterprise environment, uh, blocking the legacy authentication uh, requires first analyzing the data before taking any actions uh, because uh, we need to identify the legacy authentication uh, clients that is used by your applications uh, or any kind of accounts in your environment uh, and, and inform the required uh, uh, application owners uh, so that they can take the corrective actions uh, from their side without making any impact uh, to the environment uh, and thereby you're also enforcing the modern authentication and protecting their applications as well uh, because uh, you know there's a huge possibilities uh, there are a lot of uh, there are few places uh, where uh, you know the authentication protocols can be utilized and uh, you need to find them uh, through the reporting uh, and then confirming uh, is the best way to go uh, because it's, it's uh, this option was given in the past so there is a possibility that uh, it can be utilized so it's always better to generate a report check uh, what are the applications dependent on the legacy authentication and then uh, proceed further so today in this video we are going to take a look at the steps that we are going to identify uh, what are the methods that we use to uh, you know find the le legacy authentication utilization in your environment the first easiest way to use is the azure portal sign in logs uh, as you can see in the screen uh, the azure portal sign in logs uh, with this you can uh, you know uh, filter the type of the legacy authentication for the last uh, one month uh, uh, and then you know uh, i think one month should be a good time uh, you can use the option uh, one month uh, and then filter uh, the client types so here like uh, if you go to the uh, if you go to the azure portal and then sign in logs here uh, you can always go ahead and uh, choose uh, the uh, option last one month and then client app here uh, microsoft uh, has categorized the modern authentication clients into two types the first one is uh, of browser and the second one is the mobile apps and desktop clients uh, and apart from that uh, if you see any other uh, authentication microsoft uh, suggests this, uh, the other legacy authentication clients because they are not capable of uh, uh, doing the modern authentication like any kind of uh, second factor so what you need to do is just select the client app uh, just untick uh, browser mobile apps and desktop clients and just click on apply so here you would be able to see what are the clients that is still dependent on the legacy authentication in my case uh, i don't have anything but one thing you need to keep in mind is uh, you need to look for four types of reports here because uh, the first one is the interactive interactive is the user who is uh, keying in with the username and the credentials and the non-interactive uh, is the second one which you have, uh, for example, if it is running any kind of a system account uh, uh, or uh, yeah, like uh, non uh, or or any kind of user which is uh, not interactive, so you you see them as non-interactive. Uh, so over here, um, if any system is using it, yeah, if it is not capable of doing the MFA, then you see here is as a non-interactive, and then the next one you also see service principles, and the last one is the my signage. So how do you see this? Like when you click on the download, uh, there is two options to download JSON and CSV. It's up to you. Uh, what is your best way to do it? Uh, uh, so when you click on download, you see like 
it gives you an option for the interactive uh, and then uh, in, uh, non-interactive and then uh, application sign-ins and MS sign-ins. Uh, if you look at the interactive sign-in auth details, non-interactive sign-in auth details, I'm not able to find any uh, much uh, useful information over that. Uh, but in, for you to categorize what are the clients that is utilizing, so you are just dependent on the interactive sign-ins, non-interactive sign-ins, uh, application sign-ins and MS sign-ins. So these four reports would give you a uh, option what are the applications for example if you go and download the application signage it will give you uh, the list of the clients that is still dependent on the legacy authentication so if there is any service principles uh, that is still utilizing the legacy authentication you would be able to see them over here the same thing for the ms signage if there is any uh, ms signage like uh, any kind of the applications uh, which is coming from the microsoft for example if you have any devops uh, 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 if you have any DevOps uh, uh, repos uh, that is still utilizing any kind of uh, 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 basic authentication or, uh, for example, SharePoint Online or uh, uh, OneDrive, anything that is related uh, to the Microsoft applications, then if you, you see here on the MS signage. The same thing uh, you can see for the non-interactive uh, uh, is uh, for, the uh, for the accounts uh, and also the interactive is for the accounts which is used directly by the users. So you can download all these uh, and then, uh, you know, like you can do a filter um, and then create a, a, even, for example, a pivoted chart to identify the count of the logins from the different sources. Um, and then uh, that would help you to, you know, uh, uh, drill down to the uh, to the applications which is still dependent on, uh, uh, which is still dependent on the legacy authentication. So, at the end, like you should have only two types of client, uh, which is uh, only uh, browser and mobile apps clients. Uh, like uh, for the SMTP, uh, yes, I said, uh, as I stated, uh, MS, MS will bring up uh, some other new uh, other way. But for the other things, you should uh, definitely uh, uh, make sure that uh, no one is using uh, any other options uh, for uh, connecting uh, to uh, uh, connecting uh, to the applications. Okay, this is the first way of doing that. And the second way, what you can do is uh, you can use the Microsoft Sentinel. Uh, so as we all know, uh, most of the organizations are using the Microsoft Sentinel uh, to uh, you know uh, do the monitoring. It can be easy to find uh, through the Sentinel as well. So all we need to do is uh, just you need to na navigate into the Microsoft Sentinel workspace. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to the workspace and then you have to go to the templates. Um, Going to the templates, you just click on the workbooks. So on the templates, you just need to type in insecure uh, because that is one kind of a very good uh, uh, insecure, uh, no, uh, the template which is uh, given by Microsoft. So all you need to do is just click on the new template. Over here, um, it is uh, basically uh, trying to fetch uh, your logs uh, from the workspace that you have configured. And then you can choose the time range. Uh, so here, if you see, it gives us also a, a very good categorization uh, of the summary. Uh, what are the locks uh, in the last 30 minutes? I don't have anything. So I'm just going to check it for the last 30 days. In the Sentinel, you can do for up to 90 days, which is good. Um, OK. So in the summary, if you see, um, it gives you what are the um, what are the overall protocol that it has been utilized? And uh, you have the next tab, which is called LDAP. And in the LDAP, you see what are the accounts that is uh, using the LDAP. I have no uh, in, in my uh, tenant. And then uh, you have the NTLM. The same thing goes for uh, server message block. Uh, and then Kerbos, Windows Digest, AD Legacy of in my case, I have just one. Uh, I think I have a, uh, I have two meeting rooms set up uh, uh, in my uh, environment. So basically, they are just utilizing uh, utilizing them. Uh, I think maybe it is used for uh, the Skype uh, backend. I think that's the reason it is uh, showing up over here. Okay, and. Uh, if you see any well, if you want to see any vulnerable secure channel, they also have categorized uh, tab for that, and uh, it would be showing over here, which is really good. Uh, 
So this also simplifies the admin action. Uh, if you want to uh, filter the insecure protocols, you can always uh, come here and uh, take a look at it uh, and then uh, proceed further. So this is the second way of uh, doing it. And uh, the third way of uh, doing it is uh, you can still go back to uh, the Azure sign-in logs. And uh, you all you need to do is uh, just go into uh, the Azure Active Directory. In the Azure Active Directory, uh, you have something called uh, monitoring. In the monitoring, uh, there is something called uh, the workbooks. When you click on the workbooks, uh, uh, by the way, this uh, connects to a different uh, workspace and uh, not to the central workspace. Uh, so here, uh, when you go into the workbooks of uh, your Azure Active Directory, then here, there is also another uh, workbook which is uh, present for identifying the signings using the legacy authentication. So here you are just going to select uh, the time range and then uh, all users, all applications and status. So I'm going to use the time range as the last uh, 30 days. So if you see here, uh, yeah, it is giving me, uh, yeah, there is one user uh, who is using the protocol, uh, which is good. Uh, yeah, it says as a Microsoft Teams web client, uh, as I stated, uh, I have two meeting rooms. I think one of the meeting room uh, does not have the modern authenticator uh, toggle switched on. Uh, maybe that's the reason it's uh, showing up over here. Uh, so over here, you also have an option to, uh, uh, you know, if you're very good at uh, customer query language, what you can do is just uh, click on, uh, the query that's running in the backend, um, and then you will be able to see the uh, the query that is running uh, for this uh, particular uh, event. Uh, so this is the sign-in logs. Uh, you can uh, see uh, it is looking for all applications, and then it is uh, showing the results. So you can just simply copy this, uh, and if you have the Cluster Explorer on your uh, the, on your uh, you know laptop, if you want to further customize it, yeah, you can always do that. So this is the easiest way uh, you can find it from the Azure AD sign-in logs. And the last one uh, which you can uh, uh, do is uh, use the conditional access uh, policies because there is a conditional access policy which you can create by uh, uh, just uh, block the, uh, the clients which is using uh, not the modern authentication type. Like just simply block the clients which is not using the authentication type of browser uh, and Office 365 apps. So here, uh, if you see here, in the conditions, so uh, there is one condition which is selected. So client apps. So they allow uh, they they are selecting Exchange Active C clients and other clients. So when they select these two, the grant is going to be blocked. So except uh, for uh, uh, the browser and the mobile apps and desktop clients, all types of authentication is going to be blocked. Uh, so this is the CA003 block legacy authentication. Uh, that is a ready-made template which is available in the Microsoft uh, uh, website. Uh, when you go to docs.microsoft.com uh, blocking legacy authentication, there is a template. You can just click on it and it uh, brings you directly over here. There are multiple ways to create the conditional access policies if you're doing it where. Uh, uh, the, the the DevOps, or if you're doing it in automation, or uh, you can also do it manually. Uh, that's perfectly fine. So this is this template is ready made already available in the Microsoft uh, 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 Docs website. So just following them would uh, allow we, will bring you here. The first thing I always say I would suggest is just keep them only on the report only mode. So keep, keeping them on the report only mode will help you to identify what are the clients still utilizing and dependent on the legacy authentication. And later, uh, you know, finding them, uh, reporting them to the correct, uh, appropriate application owners, uh, and then, you know, after taking the corrective actions, you can just toggle the switch to turn it on. So, post that, um, no other uh, uh, legacy authentication is going to uh, be working in your environment. So, and there is also another way in the same conditional access policies. You have something called insights in reporting. When you click on the insights in reporting, uh, all you need to do is. Uh, select the particular conditional access policy in our case block legacy authentication so here if you see the conditional access policy query is pending yes we need to select uh, what policy so i'm just selecting block legacy authentication and after i select block legacy authentication look for the last uh, 90 days let's go uh, and then we're going to see uh, so the user signings if you could take a look at it it says yes there is uh, one device uh, and then the client app is one, 
uh, which is uh, still utilizing. Uh, this gives a very good uh, uh, pivoted chart, uh, which is nice, uh, which is nice giving the device state, device platform, client app, uh, uh, and also the sign-in risk, uh, and also even the location, which is good. Uh, uh, it is uh, it is showing you the location. Uh, the next one, what you can do is uh, here also you see something called service principal sign-ins. So when you click on the service principal sign-in, it is also going to give you uh, any kind of uh, service principal that is uh, present in your Azure AD, uh, which is different on this. So when you scroll down, uh, yeah, it says there is a Microsoft Graph, uh, SharePoint Online, and Exchange Online, uh, which is still dependent. Uh, so I can just simply uh, take a look at it and uh, uh, block them. So uh, Overall, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, the conditional access insights reporting is also a very good place where you can uh, identify what are the clients that is still dependent on uh, uh, the basic authentication. Uh, what I would say is, uh, uh, you know, like the best thing is like uh, finding it first and then uh, trying to make sure that legacy authentication is blocked uh, uh, is the is the latest stage. The first thing, the first stage is you need to find what are the applications which are still utilized in the legacy authentication. Uh, and also, uh, you can see it in the micro uh, in the Microsoft 365 Security Center scores scorecard. Uh, there also a report like if you have uh, any kind of the legacy authentication. So uh, I always advise to, to use a phased approach rather than uh, instantly you know deactivating the basic authentication, blocking the protection. Uh, so uh, you know there might be few uh, few applications will still dependent on that. Uh, uh, so. When ready uh, and onboarded uh, for from those applications which is dependent, uh, you can just completely block legacy authentication uh, using this conditional access policy. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you.